I'm back. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an interview, a live interview, a podcast interview. And uh, today we're going to be talking about franchises. And have you ever considered franchising as an option? And we're going to actually talk to today about what is a franchise, why franchise, why to work with a franchise broker, because that's my special guest today. It's Andrew Hoffman. He's from My Franchise Partners, and he is he's a franchise broker. But the cool thing is he works, you kind of work on both sides of it, right, Andrew? You work with fran people who want to franchise, but you also have clients who want to franchise, uh, branch out and launch franchises as a franchise to grow their business. So if you're thinking about buying a franchise, or you want to grow your business by launching franchises, Andrew's your man. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dwayne. Happy to be here. And you're right. I do work uh, both sides of the coin. A uh, good example of that can be demonstrated by a few phone calls this week alone. Um, I have a phone call with a lady in San Antonio, Texas, who wants to launch a yoga massage franchise. And she's got one store doing well. And it's kind of, where do I go from here? So we take it from, from, you know, A to Z, the whole thing getting set up, the legal, the marketing, the structure of the business, et cetera. The gentleman is in Orange County, California. He's a pharmaceutical sales rep. He wants to buy a master franchise. So we discuss that and how to build that out as well. And then, um, you know, and then I have a guy in Maryland who's a recruiter. And all these people can't find jobs right now. So we work with him trying to play some of his top end recruit candidates into a franchise opportunity. So there are many aspects of franchising, um, and depending on each person, you, you kind of, to be colloquial, you kind of pick your poison, so to speak, and what, what works for you may not work for, for me, and vice versa. So there are a lot of aspects of the franchising, and what it gives you, the bit of a franchising is for a person who's applying for a franchise, it gives you the structure. You have a proven system, you have ongoing training, ongoing support, a marketing support, the R&D support for products and services. Um, you know, when you find something that works for you, there's thousands of concepts out there. What's good for the goose is not good for the getter necessarily. So you have to avoid looking at trends, what your neighbors are doing, what your colleagues are doing, and you find the fit for you. And part of that, what I look at is a, a five-pronged approach. Skills, experience, passion, desired lifestyle, and your current financial picture. The advantage of the lot of it right now is that there's really low interest rates with small business loans. It makes it very attractive. You can roll over some of your RSP in the States, use a 401k rollover um, as well. A lot of attractive packages. Some franchisors give you in-house funding as well. And right now, because of the current e economy, you may even get a break on franchise fees and royalties. So structure is all there. And it's um, what you found is some stats the U.S. Uh, Department of Labor and Statistics is that independent businesses fold at about four times the rate of franchises. So after five years' time, you have 20% still in business with franchises. We're going to have 70 or 80% of them still in business. You know, and it's easier to resell. You get the brand name you're selling, not just your little Andrew's hobby shop on the corner. You have Dwayne's Franchising, 100 locations across North America. It's much easier to sell. So um, I think about the math of this thing. If you take a 6% royalty and you have $400,000 in sales, just a ballpark, plus well, $24,000 in royalty per year. For $24,000 a year, will you find a business coach or a mentor? Will you find a marketing expert? Will you find training available to you? Will you have back office technical support their product or services over 24K? As an independent business person, that's just not going to happen. Not even close. So it gives you business in a box is, is the, the kind of the catchphrase. You know, you're, you're business for yourself, but not by yourself is the other catchphrase. And a lot of the best franchisors are the peer group. So let's say Andrew and Dwayne own the same franchise. Dwayne's in Toronto, Andrew's the same as in Ottawa, for example. Somebody else gets a franchise in Winnipeg. They have gone now to a peer group. You meet once a month, once a week. These people all have the same experience you've had, and they walk through projects, challenges, opportunities, where you're the only business person in a network group, me and I get the same sort of level of support and peer um, education 
knowledge, et cetera, you get out of franchising. So a lot of pluses there, in my opinion. They can go with that. Yeah, that's great. And uh, not all franchises, as a, not for all franchises, are created equal. <laughs> and uh, so often we, we just see. Uh, I mean, this, the reason this came about is we had a, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, hey, it'd be a good spinoff topic. And you know, the people are so, are so familiar with seeing the big names, like a, like and. Some of them aren't even actually really franchises. They could be corporate stores, but look like a franchise. Um, what's the, what's kind of the rate? Maybe give us some examples of that maybe people don't really realize are franchises that, uh, that are a good, uh, a good opportunity and, and can make a, you know, you can do better than just making a living running one. Yeah, the, the stereotypical image of a franchise are the big names you see in the food and beverage industry. I'm not gonna list their names here, but people know who they are. And you wear a uniform. You have a hat, you have a top, you have slacks, you have same color shoes. Everything is identical head to toe. Uh, they're very structured. How you use a name, how the store is set up is built to a certain format, structure, the colors, um, everything. So that's one side over here. Those are just a tip of the iceberg. They're a very small part of that pie. Um, and many of those are very expensive. So quite frankly, some of them cost upwards of seven fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars. And some of the top ones now, you can't get a franchise with them unless you work for them as an employee, your family worked for them as an employee in the past, or you already own a franchise. Uh, for someone to come in off the street, they're very restrictive because you don't know their culture. So eight hundred thousand dollars, I can find people a a litany of opportunities from say 50,000 to 200,000, 300,000, uh, 100,000 dollars that can make them six figures. There's one that's very attractive in Southwestern Ontario. You invest under $70,000, their top quartile net income exceeds $200,000 a year. People think of a home-based franchise, they think of sort of a uh, mom, stay-at-home mom, dad goes to work or vice versa, and Tupperware parties, um, you know, maybe makeup parties, Mary Kay, something like that. Far from it. You have a home-based office, you're from your laptop, you have a mobile business, you could be in the home improvement sector, you could be in B2B, you could be in B2C, um, you have tax write-offs, a home-based office. You may have bricks and mortar, but you could be in industrial areas as opposed to high traffic in a mall. You know, and so a lot of it goes to, again, the five criteria. What matches your skills, your desired lifestyle, and what are your goals? And so People need to focus on, you know, sort of the, the actions to create the end result, not the end result. I want to own a business. Great. Okay, the actions are measure the risk. Do you have the right traits for it? Uh, how much do you have to invest? What's the lifestyle you want? Um, do, you have, do you have children? Do you have parents to take care of? Do you want to go to the college every weekend, for example? Um, on average, you, you should be able to find a franchise that gives you a six-figure income it's going to cost you perhaps a two, three hundred thousand dollar range of investment in Canadian dollars. Right? Where I like to work is where, in that sort of sandbox. So people come in and they maybe take a line of credit or a second mortgage or they have cash available. We target those franchises in two or three years' time, give an ROI and income above hundred thousand dollars. And you don't have to be those big, big guys. Well, you unique thing there in that realm is what I call rebranding or diversification. Let's say, for example, Dwayne owns a, uh, he's a carpenter. Business is kind of flattened off. What's he going to do? He wants to grow his business. He has a client list of, say, we'll say 5,000 names he's had for the last 5, 10 years. Business is good, but he wants to get beyond a plateau and grow the business. Why not rebrand your, your blue-collar business or your side business or whatever it might be, your accounting business, with a franchise name, get their tools, rejuvenate your business, or if you are the carpenter, Maybe take on a deck franchise or a plant repair franchise or a window cleaning franchise or a concrete repair franchise. You, you already have the clientele, you have the vehicles, you have the tools, you know, you have everything you need, phone number, everything. You've now remarketed the same people with a whole brand new concept. The training is done, support's done, marketing is done, you're sliding over the franchise fee, easy investment for you, even double your potential income. That's also available for people as well. That was good, and and you can do it yourself, right? Like you got, you always you could always do it yourself. You can do it the independent way, 
but especially if you've already built an established piece to say, well, I don't necessarily want to have to run or start up another business from scratch. Can I bring something in? And like I said, it's, um, and I always, I use this with some of my clients is, uh, another, like a bigger share of the wallet yeah. or, you know, you already have the customer. So if you've already been doing some, you know, bathroom renovation and you can drive by and you can, or survey your customers to say, hey, how many, how many customers have a deck? How many customers have a pool? How many people have a, a driveway that needs to be resealed? And again, rather than having to go do all the research yourself, if you bring in a franchise that has that expertise, you can get up and going a lot faster um, in that sense. All right, uh, you talk about, uh, uh, you talk about uh, the five things, and one of them you said, talked about is traits. Uh, I do some work I, work, I work with a personality assessment tool with my clients. Um, what kind of traits uh, would lead, what kind of traits would, would lead to someone being more successful than average um, in running a franchise? Okay, there's two aspects of that. There are a number of what are called sort of psychological analysis type programs you can use. Let's park that to the side for a second because that will depend upon the actual franchise itself. So, for example, the, the, the guy in Orange County mentioned earlier who's looking at a, a healthcare franchise, um, he needs to have sales. BD type uh, and management skills, whereas another person may, may be a little bit different. Um, so the five traits, uh, generally speaking, would indicate some success in the franchise world are uh, risk aversion. People think entrepreneurs are ready to absorb some risk. Well, we aren't uh, the, the high wire worker walking across the Niagara Falls on a tightrope. That's, that's not that's not entrepreneurship. So. In the franchise world, because of the training, the concepts, proven locations, uh, final location for you, um, negotiating leases on your behalf, all that thing, and because your partner, the franchisor, is, is a partner making money as well because the royalties don't do well if you aren't doing well. So it's a calculated risk as opposed to me putting Andro's Barbershop downtown Toronto and no experience as a barber. I rent some space. looks pretty cool. I have no background at all. That's high risk. So franchises are calculated risk. Second biggest one is probably coachability. Um, you mentioned earlier, people kind of commit as an entrepreneur, you want to do their own thing. Well, doing your own thing, freewheeling, doesn't quite work in the franchise world in one sense. However, having said that, um, it does work. The example I got there is a gentleman had a, a moving and junk removal franchise in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Eight, about 80,000 people in Kalamazoo, Halfway between Detroit and Chicago. Too far to go to either one of those markets. The average first-year franchisor in that franchise system, that, that company, um, did around three, four hundred thousand bucks a year in sales, first year. Attractive, but not off the chart great, but still attractive first year. This guy did a million dollar sales in his first year. He he took the system and he free wheeled with the system. He doubled everything in the marketing program and structure. He said, I got what you taught me, I understand it, totally got it, but you know what? I'm going to free wheel a bit, and that's what he did. So you tap into your own ref references, your referrals, people you know, communication skills, regardless of where it is, you're going to build people up in your system, you're going to create success for your staff people, success for your company. You need to do with clients with a B2B, B2C. You can't talk to them in a constructive manner. You're probably not going to do so well. Remember, as a franchisee, you are the big kahuna. Everybody, everybody goes to you eventually. It could be a customer compliment, it could be a customer complaint, it could be a staff issue. So you need to be able to talk to people effectively. And then of course, be able to follow a system. If in the franchise application process, in every step of the way, a candidate challenges a system, the franchisor will just throw, put, and say, you know what? They can't follow a system, refuse to follow a system. They want to reinvent the wheel, and they'll say, "Hey, look at, you know, we have 500 franchises across North America. We've done pretty well over the last 20 years. What about us? Is that you hate so much? Well, why do you like it? It's like our system. Maybe we're not a good match." And they will challenge you back, and they may just walk away from you. So you have to identify: can you follow the system? And um, the last one, of course, whether you're independent or a franchisee, is your affinity for hard work. There's a story about a guy with a Canadian franchise that I worked with. He bought his beauty salon. It was in Richmond Hill. And um, opened it up, and sales were awful. 
It was the worst franchise in 30 years history of the company. And so they talked to me. I said, well, like, your sales are low. We get it's new. You get getting off the ground. We appreciate some issues here. We understand that. But what's what's going on? And the, and the guy said to them, well, it's your job to run it. I bought it. You run it. <laughs> so and you want to stay home all the time and not run it. So th there are hands-on and passive ownership models. You have to you know, recognize from the start, if you want a passive ownership model, you must hire a very strong manager who's there day-to-day -day run operations for you. Even as a passive owner, you'll manage, you'll talk to the lawyers, the accountants, the marketing people, you manage the manager, but you aren't involved day-to-day. -day. So you got to decide in some models, that doesn't work very well at all. Some models, they're built for that. So, so the, the risk aversion, coachability, communication skills, ability to follow a system, and your affinity for hard work. Five right there. The psychological part, that's a sidebar. And those are, and those are great. And uh, that leads us into our, uh, not to our last piece, but the, one of the last, the, uh, of the three things we, we suggested we were going to talk about would be, uh, and I think people are already got a good taste of it, is the advantages of working with someone like you, the advantages of working with, with a, a franchise broker to say, hey, Andrew's been around the block a couple of times. He's, he's, it's not his first, yeah, so not his first go at being uh, uh, working with someone. So maybe just share a little bit about how, how you work and the advantages of um, working with someone like you as opposed to just going to one of the big franchise expos. Like we have them so many here in Toronto like almost like two, three, four times a year when we used to do big events. It's kind of gone on hold right now. So even better to work with a broker because you can't go to one of those big events. But maybe just share with me the a couple of things of how the advantages of working with a broker. Great question. So you drop a couple points first and I come back to it in a second. A franchise show is like franchise tourism. There's four big ones in Toronto. I work all four of them with a Canadian franchise or in your booth and, and people walk I recognize people going to the shows year after year, collecting the, the brochures in a bag and never buy anything. So my background is at 22, this way before the internet, look at the gray hair, this precedes Google, internet, cell phones, et cetera. I started an import business in my 20s in Ontario, imported goods from Japan and, and Europe and sold to schools, clubs, and teams throughout North America. So you got that. Then later in my career, I rose to being a senior executive in a lot of firms are involved in global commerce, multiple locations across Canada, up to 500 staff, multi-million dollar budgets, a lot of issues, etc. Then the franchise world, so you take all that for a second, I bring that all to the table to help my, help my, my candidates that I work with. A broker in the franchise world, um, for a comparable an analogy, is a real estate broker. A realtor will sell a home. The person selling the home pays them a commission, not the buyer. So that's the analogy. So Dwayne's looking at buying a franchise. You're my example, sorry Dwayne, but you're my example. Say, so, and Dwayne works with me. He's not paying me a penny. The franchisor likes me so much, wants me to sell their franchise so much, they pay me a referral fee. It's as simple as that, right? So the advantage of broker of this is that we will discuss the five criteria. I'll actually take a psychological analysis on my website. Uh, it takes about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, it comes, comes back to you pretty quickly as well. We discuss all that. We talk on the phone, email, text. I'm available 24-7, um, you know, to discuss any questions, concerns you have. I take all that information and I research matches for everything I got about you, the five traits, et cetera, what seems to match you and the goals you want and your budget. And we discuss those. So first, let me show you two, three, or four opportunities. All I want is your feedback saying, Andrew, I like them, you're on track, or we must have missed something in our communication that's way off track. Either way, quite honestly, is beneficial because I know then we're, we're on or off track and we can keep going or retool. So I do all that for you. You're busy, you have a career, you have a job, you have a family. I do all that work for you. It might take uh, three months, it might take a year, it might take two years. That part doesn't matter to me at all, it's totally irrelevant. We go back and forth quite a bit. What I do is I will coach you through the process. People have to understand you're buying a franchise, you're applying for a franchise. Not everybody's accepted. So I will, I will talk you through the process, what to say, when to say it, uh, questions to ask. If you haven't thought of them yourself, make sure you ask the right questions. Your first phone call with the franchisor will be a three-way call. You, myself, 
and their franchise development person. Um, we're on the call, we talk, I make sure right questions are asked and they're answered appropriately and clearly. And if the answer seems confusing, I'll jump in and say, well, hang on, I think the question is actually like this. You know, and after the phone call, I'll call you back within five minutes time to have your immediate gut feel about that franchise company. It's important that it's not just monetary. You can say, okay, I can afford their franchise, let's do it. Yep, does it match your traits and characteristics? Do you think you can make money? If yeah, it's profitable, okay. Can you make money with, with that business? You know, and do you like the person you talk to on the phone? That's important because that person on the phone will represent their company. So if you're thinking these guys are great to work with, or conversely, I find them arrogant, then it needs to be talked about. And then after I talk to you, I talk to the franchise and I said, this is my feedback. Well, by the way, they loved you, or they found some issues there that they weren't quite comfortable with. What is that? Or can you please explain the train a little bit better? So for example, um, I had a lady in Portland who uh, her hubby was sick. He's on disability pension. She couldn't leave him for two weeks to go to training in Philadelphia. So we arranged, this is before the COVID thing, we arranged virtual training and they lined her up with a, a franchise or within a hundred miles of where she lived. So she could drive there a day and back and do training with head office staff virtually on site in the facility. That's what I do, right? And then I also find people, you need a lawyer. My advice is um, you take the FTD, you read it, go to a lawyer, I'll find you an experienced franchise lawyer. I'll find you an experienced franchise accountant. I'll find you SEO, marketing online people, if you need to go above and beyond the franchise type thing. The franchisor can answer certain questions to a certain extent by law. I'm not quite as restricted. So I, I can show you all kinds of franchises. I'll tell you the good, bad, and the ugly about them, their successes, their failures, the warts, the good points, the, the mountains of happiness. Um, and then we'll do a validation. We'll call other franchisees as it was kind of going on and give you comparable. I, I, I give you, for example, um, pretty a tax franchise. I may find you four or five franchises that are or are not tax franchises, but it's a comparable business model in a different, different avenue, we'll say. The same type of skills and traits to be successful. And I'll say, hey, do you ever think about this thing instead of the tax franchise? What about this idea? And I will push the envelope with you. Most people go in their comfort zone, they kind of stay there, they're afraid to go beyond. I get, it's fear takes over. I will push you and challenge you, look beyond that. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to say, that'll work because of. You know, I'd say, you have the skills for this, 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 and this, and this is how it works um, with those skills. So the advantage of me is I do all the work for you. Um, there's no charge to you. Um, I found a gentleman in three months' time, he sent me over 160 emails in three months. So that's, that's over an email and a half. Never had a half email, but he, I mean, email and a half on average per day, plus phone calls, plus text messages. No problem. Happy to do that. Um, and if you have people who are offshore, help guide you through the process with your visas in Canada states as well. Immigration consultants, immigration lawyers, guide you through the process. And some franchisors are not comfortable working with visa applicants because it just takes so long. I've got a guy I'm working with now. He's coming to Canada by October. We've been talking about a franchise for a year and a half. Right? So we, we stay, stay in touch on a regular basis. Um, I think there's a lot of advantages to work with someone like me. We save a lot of time, energy. We do much much deeper research. There's things you don't see in the marketplace. There's brands you're 100% unaware of. You don't even know, never heard of the brands. You don't know they have a resale available in your neighborhood for a pittance because the owner wants to retire, can't handle anymore. Um, a 500K restaurant in Florida, I got to my candidate for $50,000 including franchise fee. That's five zero. I saved my client $450,000. Another franchise wants to come to a, a Canada They'll sell all of Ontario for five hundred thousand dollars, right? No one knows about them. They have a hundred franchises in the states. Average sales for that, that uh, business a million dollars per year. People have never heard of them. That's why they come to me. I find find stuff for I turn over the stones, the pebbles, find the deals, and analyze the the heck out of them for you. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. Uh, yeah. And don't worry, we'll, we'll have Andrew back again because uh, we won't. But it's one of those things that we talked about. Is like we could talk, we could talk, we did talk the one day for like an hour and a half, two hours. 
Uh, you don't necessarily want to listen to a two hour episode. Maybe you do. <laughs> Andrew's like, man, keep going, keep going. Is all the free coaching he gives. And that's the other piece too, is that you're the other option that we may look into on a, on a future episode. Well, let's just drop in a couple of things that we will be talking about, you know, other things. Or, and if you're, and if you're watching, uh, of course you're watching, you're listening, uh, drop in the comments some questions that you may have because we can also share the, you know, get back to you with those. And, and that's the best thing is, or we can connect you with Andrew, we can reach out to Andrew. Uh, before we wrap up or in the comments, I'll, I'll share how you can get in touch with Andrew. Um, one of the things we talked about is a, a future thing where we get a little bit more of what's the process. We talked kind of high level, but what's the, the process, the discovery day, uh, we touched on the traits. Um, one of the things we were looking at is like comparing, uh, bringing in a, my, a friend of mine is an independent coffee, um, I, like a store franchise, uh, not a store, yep. but a store versus a, a running a, a coffee franchise and say, Hey, what's the difference and actually bringing in and having a, if so if you're interested in that, then, then stay tuned and as we'll do that. We'll have a, a round table to say, here's a franchisee and here's an independent. Yep. Hey, what did you, what did you like? What did you didn't, what don't, what, what's the, what's the challenges? What's the pros, the cons, how to get started, right? One of those things is, is yep. Hey, it sounds great. Uh, kicking the tires, you know, do a little research, but also sometimes it's like, hey, connect with someone like Andrew. Say before you go wasting three three years of, of surfing the internet. Sometimes the internet's good for us. Sometimes it's not. Paralysis, uh, paralysis by analysis, right? Because we just yep. we think we're we're doing it, and it turns out we don't know it. We don't know like what's available to us isn't really the the real deal. Um, and then I, I like the idea too is that. Um, if you look at a franchise, it doesn't have to start from scratch, right? Like you can, people, people retire, surprise, surprise. People don't necessarily, the next generation doesn't necessarily want to take over. They saw mom and dad run that, you know, run, run it successfully, but they're like, wow, that was a lot of work. And I would like just to cash out and, and, and again, because it's a business, you're building a business that is sellable. And then how does that go? Does it, does some go back to the franchise or can you, can, as a franchisee, do you sell them Do the franchisors work with the franchisees? on that exit on the exit strategy because it's always good as we say figure out what your exit strategy is before you do your entry strategy absolutely so, yeah. especially if you have business partners it's like and and that would be the other way too is we could touch on to say hey if you're if you're thinking about doing it as with partners also good idea to put things in place like buy sell agreements and equity versus sweat equity and, and, and jobs and, and job descriptions to say, Hey, just because you're the franchisee, <laughs> which, which one of the hats, those, you know, the 17 different hats that you wear <laughs> and, um, and also working. And I, I like, I was referencing Michael Gerber's book, um, you know, the E-Myth, great book. Actually, the, the, when I was looking at, um, surprise, surprise, I was actually we talked about this book six years ago, uh, when I first left my corporate world, I actually looked at um, franchises and the, and the coach I was working with at the time recommended reading the E-Myth and it talks really about all the stuff about, hey, who's your first hire, but the importance of systems and procedures and, and org charts and all that stuff that you get when you buy a, possibly. Not all franchises are equal, remember, not all franchises are equal. But uh, I want to thank so much for joining me today, Andrew. Uh, I said we had a great talk. We've been, we connect on Fridays. If people are, are hanging out, watch us today, uh, and you want to connect with us, we, we also get together Friday mornings with a group, and uh, you're, some, you're welcome to join to, to get tapped into and have some more open discussions. And, um, and Andrew has a thing, he's like, I think, uh, not to offer your services, but he said something like, if you take them for lunch, <laughs> <laughs> just pick up their phone and call so hey uh so just when, as we wrap up unless uh, so you have anything else uh how do people connect with you where is it what's the website what's the what email address how would you like people to be able to to connect with you yeah, the website is my franchise partners with an s.com my email is andrew at my franchise partners.com phone number is 647-991-2282 you can call or text me there anytime. And I love it when people make it so easy to get a hold of them. I go to people's websites and I'm like, I'm, I'm still some, sometimes I'm, I'm old school where I just want to pick up the phone and call someone. And I go and I'm like, I, I run around, and I, I can't get, a, I can't find a way to reach out, reach to reach them. Mm -hmm. And I just go, I just go next. I'm like, if you're not easy to get a hold of, it's going to make it easy. If, so, if you uh, want, you go to, uh, go, go to LinkedIn. I'm Andrew Hoffman, CMA. You can catch me on LinkedIn there. And just do send me messages there if that's easier. Um, and you should respond to people in less than two hours. 
two hours is pretty good. I tell people 24 hours because I'm not a doctor, even though it's D.R. Richards and Associates. I'm going to use that tagline. A, a colleague gave me that one. I'm like, ah, I'll work with it. I'll work with it. All right. Thanks so much, Andrew. And um, hey, and if you're watching and you liked it, it's okay to hit the share button. It's okay to hit the like button. It's okay to hit the subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks again. Thanks, Wayne. Until next time.